Hello, so this is the second section. We have solved question number one to 10. In the previous section, you can find the link above. And now we are going to sell, solve questions number 11 to 20, which are four marks each. This is AMC 2019 middle primary question paper. All right, question number 11. In Jacquees puzzle, a number is put in each box. In each circle, the four numbers must add to 13. Which number goes in the top box? So we have to find the number here, but before we can find the numbers here, we have to use uh, the addition to 13 to find the other numbers, which will lead us to the top number. So as you can see in this circle, we already know the three numbers, seven, three, and one, that adds up to 11. That means this number should be two. All right, let's take the next circle now. So now going for this circle, we already know the three numbers again, five, three, and one, which adds up to nine. And to make a total of 13, we need a four more here. So now we will go on to our final circle. This is our final circle. And now we know the three numbers are four, one, and two, which add up to seven. And to make 13, this top number should be six. So we found our answer. It's E. That is how you work it out. Let's go to the next question. Okay, we are on to question number 12. Noah follows the instruction in this flowchart. What number does he end with? Now, as you can see, it starts with 8, but then it goes, follow some instructions, and then it goes into a question. If the answer is no, it goes back into this loop. But if the answer is yes, then only it can go towards the end. So let's try to solve it. All right, so we start with the eight. So we follow the next instruction, subtract five. It becomes three multiplied by five, which is 15. It goes into the question, is it greater than 100? Of course it's not, so it goes back into the loop with 15. Let me erase this. In the second loop, if 15 goes in, subtract five, it becomes 10. Multiply by five, it becomes 50. It goes into the question box again. Is it greater than 100? It is not. So it goes back into the second loop. So we have 50 going back into the loop. Let me remove this. Let me change the color. So 50 goes back in. Subtract 5, which is 45. Multiply by 5, which is 225. It goes back into the question. Is it greater than 100? And this time it is greater than 100. And this goes to the end which is the answer 225 goes as the, to the end so our answer is d let's go on to the next question now this is more of visualization on this number line where would the number one half be now this is interesting because they have given you zero and they have given you two we do not know where is one whole but as you know, this is two holes, so exactly in the middle, you will find one hole. Now, it's not numbered, but if you look at it, this is exactly in the middle from zero to two, so this is one hole. Now, I you should not be bothered about other uh, alphabets here. We have to find one half, so between zero and one, find the middle point, and that is half one half. So, as I can see, B is right in the middle, and that is one half or 0 0.5 if they were asking so b is the correct answer now this is very interesting question number 14 when bessie puts a mirror next to her calculator the digits sometimes spell backwards spell words in the mirror which number spells bessie in the mirror now to understand this first let's look at this closely now can you see the numbers were three, three, and two. But when they were reflected in the mirror, the two reflected to become a S, and the three reflected to become a E. It looks like a E, and another three becomes E. Now, in order for our word, we want Bessie to be seen in the mirror. So that means if I can, if I can show you here, Okay, 
So if we want, all right, if I want Bessie to be seen in the mirror, that means if in our calculator, the closest digit here should be the one that uh, reflects to B. The one that reflects to B should be 8. That's the closest one that we can reflect to look like a B. The E will reflect to 3. S, now we can already see from the example that the 2 was the digit that translates to S. So we will have a 2 here, another 2 here for the two S's. I is 1, and the E, again, just like before, is a 3. Oh, I'm running out of space, but as you can see, this is 312238. And in the answer, let me remove this all. So our answer is 312238. All right. Just remember this last digit 8 reflects first so it becomes B here and then the rest of the digits goes in the opposite order. All right, let's go to question number 15. All right, we are at question number 15 now. Looking at the view of the four dice, how many dots cannot be seen? We can see four dice here and there are three sides visible to us but there are three sides which are not visible to us. Instead of counting dice by dice, what we can do is we can think of a dice in general. So any dice will have six faces. One, two, three, four, five, five and six. The six faces will have these dots and you can add them up. They come up to be 21. So each dice, when you add up all the dots, there should be 21 dots on any of the dice. Now, because there are four dice so that means the total dots on four dice is 21 times 4 which is 84 so we should have a total of 84 dots on our four dice now because as i said in the beginning there are some faces visible to us but other faces are not visible to us so let's count how many how many dots are visible to us so on this dice we can see three two and one which is six six dots are visible to us on the second one we can have six three and five which is 14 we have 14 dots visible on the second one on the third one, we have four, five, and one, which are, which are 10 dots. And then the last one, we have three, five, and one, which is nine. So these dots are visible to us. We can add them together, and they come up to be 39. Six plus 14 plus 10 plus nine is 39, sorry. 39 dots are visible to us. But this is not the question. The question is how many dots are hidden from us which cannot be seen. So to do that, we know there should have been 84 dots, but only 39 are visible to us. So we can do a subtraction. This was 14, 14 taken by nine is five, four. So the answer is 45 dots are hidden away from us or on are on the sides that are not visible to us. So this is the answer. All right, let's go to question number 16. A pencil costs 25 cents and a ruler costs 80 cents. With $5, I, I bought one ruler. So one ruler is already bought, which is for 80 cents. And as many pencils as I could afford. Now, after buying, we had $5 and we bought one ruler already. So how much money is left? Let's work it out. So after buying one ruler, we have $4.20 $4 remaining. Now, each pencil is 25 cents. So that means if we work it out, 25 cents, that means in $1, I can buy four pencils. So in these four, $4, in these four, I can buy 16 pencils, but the remaining is 20 cents, and I cannot buy any more pencils with that. So I can buy 16 pencils in $4, 
and we bought one ruler already which was 80 cents so together we spent four dollars on pencils and 80 cents on the ruler so that means we spent 480 and the question is if I pay with a five dollar note how much change would I get so you can see if you give five dollar note and the change will be 20 cents or 0 0.20 dollars so the answer is 20 cents let's see it So this is the answer here. This is our correct answer. Let's go on to question number 17. Now this is a very interesting one. 27 identical cubes are used to make this three, three by three by three cube. Yes, we can see that that's three, that's nine cubes here in the first layer, nine cubes in the second, nine cubes in the third one. There are 27 cubes joined together to make this cube. Now the question is, how many cubes, let me mark it, so these are three by three by three. How many more are needed to make a four by four by four? If I can work out how many cubes are actually needed to make a four by four by four, we can work out how many more cubes are needed. So to make a four by four by four, you can actually work this calculation out. So four times four is 16 and then 16 times 4 is 64. So to actually make it from scratch, we need 64 cubes, but we already have 27 cubes already in this figure. So that means we need 64 minus 27. That means 37 cubes more to turn it into a 4 by 4 by 4. So the answer is E. All right, question number 18. Um, Mina has a $50 gift voucher to spend in a toy shop. So let me highlight, we have $50 gift voucher, but they won't give change from the voucher. Here's a short list of toys she would like to buy. She tried to spend as much as she liked from the $50. So we have to try not to think about how many toys are we getting, but how much can we spend out of $50. So we have to try to spend as much as we can. Now there are many options. There's a teddy bear for 24, a Rubik's cube for 14, a yo-yo for $6, and a car which is $39. All right, so let's try to see what should we buy. So in case, let's see, because this is 24 and 39, we cannot buy them together because the total is already above 50. So let's see, the first option which is actually obvious one is buying these three toys and you can add up these three together is 24 14 and 6 and it adds up to 44 so in this option we can spend 44 dollars let's see another one i will choose a different color so what if i buy this car of course because it's 39 i cannot buy the rubik's cube here which is 14 more dollars this will be above 50 so i the only option for me is to buy the yo-yo let's try to add it together 39 and six more is 45 and look at that this is actually more than 44 so we actually spend it, uh, spent more money than the previous three toys so this would be our right choice to spend as much money as we can so um if she buys no more the question is if she buys no more than one of each toy how much of the voucher will not get used so if she's able to spend 45 dollars how much voucher did not get used of course she had a 50 dollar voucher we spent 45 so she has five dollar remaining so that is the correct answer all right let's go to the next one now this is a very interesting and uh, one of the questions that requires a lot of visualization, but I found a good way uh, to actually work it out. If you have a paper and scissors by your side, do try to do it um, physically. But if you have to do it on paper, this is the method that works for me and I've taught my students how to do it. So what you do is, you can say a square piece of paper is folded twice along its diagonal. So the first, you fold it halfway here, you get a, structure like this and then you fold it one more time flip it along and you get this and then you're making cuts here and here 
Now, when you open it up, when the paper is unfolded, what will it look like? Now, this is a lot of visualization to go from this step to thinking about what will be my final product. But if you take step by step, you will be able to do it. Let me walk you through. Let me erase this. All right, so let's go closer on this one, okay? Because we know this was our first cut, first fold, and the second fold, just bear with me, was here. And as we can see in this diagram, we'll be looking at this portion here, okay? We'll make the cuts here, and we will be able to visualize what these cuts would impact the rest of the folds that are inside, all right? Let me make cuts with another color. So the first cut is here. Let's try to replicate the cut here. So this cut was here. But because you know this cut also impacts the other folds, so from this portion, it will be here, right? And because you know this portion here, the top part is folded on top of it, so that means this cut here will also impact here. So there are four folds, so actually one cut will cut four different pieces off. So this one cut here, we chop off this and this part. All right, let's go on to the next cut. So the second cut is here, again, looking at the piece that we are looking at. So we cut off a tiny piece here, but just like before, this cut will also impact the other piece. And because the other top half is folded on top of it, that means this little piece also cuts this little piece here. Let me remove the arrows now so that you can see clearly. All right. So if you're able to see the two cuts here, the two cuts here have actually taken away corners from the whole paper. So if you look at the answers, it's very visible that if these four corners are chopped off, our paper, when it when it's unfolded, it will look something like this. The B is the correct answer. If you really want to try, grab a piece of square paper, fold it, fold it two times as is shown in the question and see for yourself, does it work? All right. Now let's go on to the last question of this section, section number 20, uh, question number 20, and this is the last question of section which is for four marks. It takes Preeti 30 minutes to walk to school. Sometimes she goes on her bike and she cycles twice as fast as she walks. So she's going double the speed. So that means the time taken should actually become half because she's going double the speed. So if she's taking 30 minutes to walk, how much time will she take to cycle? She's moving at twice the speed, so it should take her 15 minutes. Is that correct? All right, now as we go along, uh, let's read the rest of the questions. Occasionally, her mother takes her in the car, which goes three times. So in the car, she goes three times as compared to her bike. Now, on the bike, she was taking 15 minutes. On the, on, in the car, she's going at thrice the speed, three times the speed. So what do you think, how much time should it take in the car? If the speed is three times, the time should be cut into one third. What's one third of 15? That's five minutes. So the answer here is five. How many minutes does it, does it take for her to get to school in the car? It's five minutes. All right, um, for, question, for, the, for question number 21 to 25, and then from question number 26 to 30, uh, I will have made separate sections, separate videos. The links are connected here. You can visit them. Thank you.